Hello and welcome to yet another worked exercise. I'm the author of the book Python for Infanics Exploring Information as well as your host for this particular uh, worked exercise. As always, the book, uh, this audio and video and these slides are copyright Creative Commons attribution and I hope you find exciting and interesting ways to reuse them and repurpose them and add to them. So pythonlearn.com is my support website for the Python for Informatics book. And if you, hopefully by now, you've got all this worked out, but it does teach you how to get started so that how all the things that you need to know to edit files and use the command line to run Python programs, you've got figured out. Okay, so our program for today is uh, from the list chapter. And uh, our program is actually, we're going to debug a program rather than just writing a program from scratch. And so what our, our task is in this program is we are uh, looking for words that start with from, and on the word, on the, uh, we're looking for lines that start with from, and on the lines that start with from, we're going to pull out the day of the week that this particular uh, email message uh, was sent, Saturday, Friday, whatever. And so the, the structure of the program is pretty standard. We're going to open a file at the top. We're going to loop through the file strip the new lines at the end, right? There's a little new line at the end of each line. And then we're going to use split to split it into words, which means that'll make this the zero word, the one word, and the two word. And then we're going to check the zero word to see if it's from. And if the zero word's not from, we're uninterested in that line, so we're going to skip back up. And if it is good, if we find a line we're interested in, we're going to skip the majority of the lines in this file. Um, less than one in a hundred of these lines actually have from in the, uh, as the first word. And then the second word is what we're interested in, so we're going to print the, the day of the week. So this program, as we type it in, is uh, going to have a traceback. And we go like, you know, as soon as you see traceback, you immediately are drawn to the word traceback. And, and maybe you've gotten to the point where you start to read the Y list index out of range. And, you know, it says line five, so that's kind of helpful. But the first thing to not get distracted about is um, is this. Our program actually ran a little bit. So when you look at a traceback, look right above it and make sure, and maybe you won't see any output, but maybe your program will have partially run. And so don't immediately assume the program is totally broken. So this is actually successful output of one of the many from lines, and it, it dies later. And so as we debug it, we'll sort of come up with techniques to sort of figure out how much your program has done before it died, because that might be an important important question to answer. How far did your program get? Um, because if it dies before the first line or on the first line, that's something different than if it goes like 300 lines and then dies. Um, if it goes a lot of, a long ways, 300 lines, and then dies, maybe there's something subtle or weird about the line it's dying on, uh, rather than just your program is like totally broken. So you got. So look for this. Look for something where your program actually partially worked um, and helps you kind of narrow down your suspicions as to what might be wrong with it. So let's get on with the let's get on with the programming. Um, and so I will simply uh, steal this. I'll cut and paste it, and that'll be that. So I'm going to cut and paste this into my text wrangler. Now it's always dangerous cutting and pasting. But I'm cutting and pasting from a slide, which seems to work a little better than cutting and pasting from PDFs. You can even get away with cutting and pasting with PDFs as long as you don't freak out when the first thing you see is a bunch of crazy syntax errors because of characters uh, being coded improperly. So now I'm going to file and I'm going to save this, save as, and I'll put this on my desktop in the lists folder, and we'll call this. Um, Day of the week dot py in the list folder. Okay, of course it's uh, syntax colored it, which makes my text wrangler syntax colored it, and so I've got sitting in this list folder. I've got the day of the week dot py. Now one of the things that we've got to do is we've actually got to get our data file. See this inbox short dot txt. So the inbox short dot txt is uh, sitting here on uh, pythonlearn.com. I'll go to the book page. And you'll see this, all this stuff in code samples, including maybe a worked version of this example. You just never know. Do do do. It doesn't look like this one's here. But the file I'm looking for is mm -hmm, mbox.short.txt. 
So there it is. It's a mailing thing. And here's one of those lines that we're looking at. And we're going to, there's many of them. This happens to be the first line of the file. So I'm going to make sure that I save this into the folder, go back to my desktop, and put it in lists, and then save it. And so at that point, I should be able to go back and see, aha, I have mboxshort.txt. Now, the interesting thing is if you read this file, if you open this file, Text Wrangler is perfectly happy. So we see from. So if I was to do sort of a search, and I'm going to search for the string um, capital from space, okay? And, um, and then I'm going to search next. Uh, there's lots of them. I'm going to make it case sensitive, okay? So it'll get only the froms that are case sensitive. Boop. There we go. And so in a sense, our program is doing this little from where it's looking. For, it's throwing away all the lines except those that start with from in a space because of the way the split works. And then it's going to pull these these days of the week, these Fridays. And so I'm kind of doing the, if I was if I, if I was doing it by hand, I'd be like, find the line that starts with from blank and then grab this little text. And that's what I'm interested in. Maybe I'm curious as to whether or not these uh, folks uh, work on the weekends or on the weekdays. And that's the purpose of this. Okay, so I'll close this. Just it's that's what that's the um, close document. There we go. So here's my little program, and so um, let's I can get rid of this now. So now I'm going to go into my desktop. I'm in my home directory, CD desktop, uh, CD lists. I do ls. There I am. I've got this day of the, day of the week Python program and inbox short.txt sitting here. So I'm going to run it. And there it works. So we get, I mean, well, works but for some value of work. So we get the same trace back the lecture slide suggested we would, and thankfully that probably means lecture slides, right? So, so here we go. We got we got this one thing where uh, the day of the week is kind of coming out, and then it dies on line five, and it even gives us the line it's dying on. So it's complaining about list index out of range, and you might be able to stare at this, and maybe you're smart, you're you have enough skill already that you're seeing these kinds of errors, and you just read it right away, and know what the problem is. But that's not so much fun. So here I am in line five, right? I'm going to go right to line five, and and so the first thing I want to do on line five is I often add a print statement right before the line that's dying, and I'll just print out something, something random. Just it, you know, sometimes I print the letter A out, right? And so now I'll save this. And now I'm going to run it again. And this tells me, just by putting a print statement in, what's going on here. It's like, OK, wait a sec. This is the good line. This is the line. I mean, this is the line I'm interested in. As a matter of fact, I want to make another change, just to help me sort of visually see what's going on. I'm going to put like a bunch of equal signs at the beginning of this line. And now I'm going to run it again. And so if I look, it's like, Ooh, dude, that's the good line. That's the line I'm liking. And here's my debugging. Something random, something random, something random. So a lot of stuff is going on here. And then finally, it dies. Right? So finally, it dies here. Now, it's line six because I added a line. So that, so perhaps instead of printing out something random, I'll print something useful. So the first thing to do is to look at this statement, the one that's dying, and say, what is the most suspicious thing in here? OK? And and so if something's going wrong with this word sub zero. It's saying index out of range, right? Something's going wrong with word sub zero. So what's the deal? So I'm not going to print out word sub zero. I'm going to print out words. I'm going to say, like, what is in this words list at this point? So now let me save that. So instead of printing something random, we'll see a bunch of words go by. And so here's that first line broken into words where from Stephen Marquard, Saturday, and here's our good line. And then here's one that doesn't have from as the first word, so we skip it. Here's one that doesn't. So let's continue on to where it's, you know, we see lots of lines. They, everything's cruising along. Um, we actually see one that says from colon, but that's not what we're looking for. So that one gets skipped too. So make sure you skip that. Now here we are. Here's the words. Here's that list of words that we've split. Now this was the line before. Here's the next line. It's like, okay, now what's going on here? Uh, that looks like an empty list. Okay, 
So I'm a little more curious. I wanna I'm gonna I'm gonna print I'm gonna print line out too. And I'm gonna put um, just so I know what's going on, I'll stick some couple pluses in front of that. So the line will have pluses on it, and then it'll print the word. So let's run this again. So I'm adding junk to this, right? So now if I look at my things, the pluses mean that's the line I'm seeing, right? I just put those pluses in for my own visible so I can visually see it more naturally. That's the line. And you can see how nicely it breaks it into words. So it breaks this line at the space. Oops, sorry. That was not so good. It, it breaks this line, spam probability line, at the space and gives me two words, right? So here we go. Uh, two, there we go. Here's the space. And then it breaks it into one word and another word. And so that's working. But if I look here, that's the line that I'm on. Oh, well, that's a blank line. Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. So let's just real quick take a look at that file again. Let's look at that file. And, and so here we go. Here we go. So that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Let's look at the line. And here we go. So if you look, the last thing that we read successfully was this line right here. This line is a blank line. So our program is choking on blank lines. It's not failing on lines that work right, and it's not failing on lines that don't have from in them. It can handle the from line fine. It can handle the uh, any other line fine, but it freaks out on the simplest of things. Blank lines. So the question is, how do we fix this, right? How do we deal with this fact that this bit of code right here is dying whenever there's a blank line, okay? So the way we do this is what's called the guardian pattern. I don't even get rid of this. So one of the guardian patterns is it looks like this. So we don't want to get to this. So we want to put something in front of it to make sure we never hit it in the dangerous situation. So it's if <laughs> something, continue. And this is if, we'll call this thing the safety check. Check. If some safety check, continue. So that means that, you know, you know if the safety check matches, we're going to not fall through and not do this dangerous line. So the question is, what would we put in as the safety check here to protect? This line is guarding this line. That's what the guardian pattern means is do something before the scary thing that hurts you. Okay, so one thing we can do is we can say, okay, well, what's words? Well, words is an empty list. You know what? If, if I got an empty list of words, I have no interest in this. So if I say words is equal to an empty list, continue. So what this basically says is, you know, read the line, strip it, split it into words, we'll print it. If it's an empty list, continue and go up to the next line. And then if it is a non-empty list, it continues here and checks to see if the first word is from. And if it is not, it continues. And then if it works, it works. So this here, this line here, look, is the guardian line. It's guarding the, this other line. And you got to do it in order. If you do the guard, you have to have the guardian happen before the line in question. So now let's run it. Oops. Let's run it, and now it works great. It's uh, we got a little too much crap, so we better um, get rid of this print statement. It didn't give me a trace back, right? So now I'm going to get rid of that print statement, and look at that. I'm getting the line, Saturday, Friday, 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 Thursday. So it doesn't look like these people work weekends, but it does look like they uh, like finishing up stuff toward the end of the week. So there we go. I mean, it's a little bit of, it's not much data to conclude anything solidly. Maybe if we look at the bigger mailbox file, we can find something else. Okay, so now it works. Let me show you um, a couple of other things that you could have used as a guardian pattern. So we could say if the words we got back as an empty list, I could say if the number of elements in words is less than one, continue. So that basically says, look, if the words that I got, if I got fewer than one word, then I'm not going to look for the first word because that's quite dangerous. So if I run that, it again works. Another more direct, even potentially more direct, would be 
Um, if uh, let's move this up, I could say if line is equal to an empty string, continue. So now what it says is, you know, if I'm going to blank line, I'm not even going to bother splitting it because I know exactly what's going to happen. So let's see if this works. So this one works as well. So now I've got you know a couple of codes, a uh, couple of um, code pass through here, right? If if the blank line, I do it after the strip to make sure it is really empty. If I, I skip blank lines this way, I come all the way down and split, and then skip lines that don't start with from this way. And the only way I make it all the way down to here is if it is a non-blank line, and if the first word is a from, and then I I do my thing, and so. So that basically is the notion of the guardian pattern. And, and the pattern is simply, if, if there is some, some code that might have a problem, depending on perhaps user input, put something in before it that makes sure that you never get to the dangerous code. And don't use a try except for this. That just would be tacky, 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 tacky. So. Um, that's the end of this, uh, this presentation, so uh, thanks a lot, and uh, see you on the next.